Africa. When I was a child, I thought about Africa. I thought about all the beautiful wild animals in the bush. I thought about elephants and lions roaming around the jungle without a care in the world. Now in Africa, that just isn't the case. Nyasa is magic. The lion's heart is the heartbeat of Africa. The Nyasa Lion Project is keeping the lion's heart beating. This is the story of the Nyasa Lion Project. It's a story about generosity, courage, and commitment to keep the heart of every lion beating in Africa. When I was told about the Nyasa Lion Project, I thought it was about lions and elephants. I found out it was about so much more. Few places now left in the world that are quite as remote, even in Africa. And how you still protect these, these large protected areas and, and, and finance them, one has to be innovative. And, and in a place like Nyasa, you've got 42 villages inside the protected area. So that makes for a very complex uh, environment. And if you do not involve people, and as conservationists, we're always looking at ways to sort of maximize uh, benefits and opportunities for local people. It's, it's all about trying to integrate them into the wildlife experience, realizing that wildlife is not just something that, that wants to chase you and trample you and charge you, but actually that, it's, that if we can find some middle ground, if we can find some compromise mm -hmm. between local people and the wildlife, we could create a win-win scenario. So the thing that we can, we can negotiate over with communities is job opportunities. And we need to look at how can we maximize those job opportunities for local people living inside protected areas and, and make sure that all of those jobs go towards conservation services and towards the conservation agenda, basically. It's about all of the, the services that surround it. So it's the building that someone has to make the rope every single year. So you provide them some job and some salaries. The grass, the, the women mm -hmm. are cutting the grass, the men mm -hmm. are weaving. All, all the, this whole camp is, is recreated every year. And that creates jobs, it creates pride, it, it creates self-esteem and all the work. It's a sustainable job. It's yeah. a sustainable income that will come year exactly. after year for them. Yeah. This camp is about trying to generate direct links between wildlife and villages. So this is, is trying to celebrate uh, local people's traditions. It gen generates jobs. You're always trying to look for, for ways to create more jobs for local people. Because if people don't have work, then they're going to look for the next best thing. And it's going to be often illegal activities. Um, now with the level of poaching here, obviously the elephants are very stressed and that's, it's very sad that that's, that's happened and, and that's, that's why you know, all of our efforts, uh, we're a lion project but at the end of the day it's not just about lions, it's about the entire landscape and about um, the, all the biodiversity that is part of that landscape and elephants are, 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 have a major role in, in that environment. Mm. And then over the last six or seven years, 10,000 elephants have been shot just in this one area. When you look at this landscape and you look at how remote you are and how wild it is, what's missing is 10,000 elephants.
Oh, now we are getting ourselves ready to go on patrol with the uh, with the Mary Scouts, and uh, we are going in the north of the of the area where there is a lot of um, elephant. And there were some uh, recently some uh, scouts that uh, for mining camps that came. So we'll go to to check about that poaching on a mining camp, especially gold mining, which is one of the biggest problems here. Each team carries. Uh, a smartphone, a, a, a ruggedized smartphone, and on, on these smartphones we collect all of the information that's being gathered. So whenever the teams see lion or wild dog or elephants, Different. they enter that data on here digitally. Uh, they they um, record you know, key observations. They, they track. This is g tracking them. So the GPS log of where they're going is is on here. So I told him, if you guys are here to hunt, we're going to meet, definitely. Whether you like it or not, we're going to find you. So make it sure that you're just looking for firewood and go back to your camp, because otherwise things won't be right. Okay. So I think they've got the message, and they definitely they won't try to do anything. It happens many times when you are in patrol to see guys like that? In the area where normally these guys, they used to do fishing, yes, it's something normally. It's something normally. And as you know that in our area, there's no boundaries. There's a community living inside the reserve. So they move for fishing. Sometimes they're looking for honey. So it's not really too easy to identify who's the poacher. As long as I hide his rifle, then you look at him as a normal person. They record all Ill illegal activities. They record the ammunition that they carry, the weapons that they carry, who's on the team. Um, it's, it's looking at where they sleep, where they rest. All of that information is embedded in this one, one machine. And then all the photography. So when they go into mining camp, they photograph all the, all the miners. They put all the names, all the, all the data that will be used in court and in the legal process is captured on this No, I choose this place because I see there is a water availability and it's also a good place. We can see the both sides, you know, whatever comes from our left to right, yeah, we'll be able to see it. That's why I thought that this is the right place for us to be. Now we are setting up the camp here in a, in a corner of the river with uh, some comfortable sand. So we'll be able to have a, a good sleep and not too many animal track around. So we hope that it will be nice. But as we know, not always that the animals are dangerous to the human beings. Mm -hmm. Yes, they will just come maybe drink water and walk on their way back. It's a not a really problem. It is exhausting work. They sleep in the bush. Last night we were visited by a leopard while we were sleeping, so they deal with that all the time. But in order to keep that leopard here, we have to really take care of it and make sure that they have a job, make sure they have the money to have that job and to conserve what they can here in Africa. This is something that is uh, quite interesting about conservation is, okay, the ranger on the scout on all these patrol are probably what is the most visible about uh, conservation boots on the ground. But actually, if you want to be efficient, there is as much work to do or even more to do with the local communities. You have to show to the people, to the local people in the village, that there is a strong interest for them 
to keep wildlife. What is interesting here in Yasa is that the people are allowed to have a sustainable use of nature. For example, you have a lot of fishermen. They are coming, they are fishing, they are collecting wood, and people are going to collect honey in the reserve. This is allowed because this is a sustainable use of nature. So it is very important for the Mariri project, for the Nyasa Lion project, is to help the fishermen. <laughs> because uh, fishing here is legal. So there is a legal way for people to have a, a source of proteins. And uh, they help, they're helping the fishermen, they put the fishermen on their side and the fishermen will not help the poachers. So you uh, speak with people and you explain them, you explain them again. And uh, you know, when you get one person, you know, starting to help you and stopping helping the poacher, this is the way you win. They understand that if you go and shoot an elephant, that's a crime against the reserve. What they don't understand is if you go dig in the sand and, 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 and look for gold, why is that a crime? You know, they're poor and they're just, they're just, they're just trying to make a living. And, and it's a far more difficult thing to explain that that's also not allowed because of the process that they use and because of the use of mercury. This village has got a problem with the food, uh, food insecurity. So giving lunch to kids helps them to come to school and at the same time they have food and they get some proteins. And apart from that, we have also sports. So the idea is to promote sports, uh, conservation and education so that unhealthy also. So these are the programs we do. I feel more confident about uh, the future as long as we can keep finding these alternatives, keep engaging communities, keep engaging people, giving people alternatives and, 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 and benefits from, from wildlife. Thank you.